So here are a couple of research directions. In the age of personal computing, this was your desktop computer's mental model of you. What do I mean by that? Well, it's how applications thought of our human capabilities. We had one finger for clicking and for hunt and peck typing, two ears because of stereo sound, and one eye for one screen. Now, a whole area of research in human-computer interaction asks the question, how can we have computation leverage more of our bodily capabilities? So here are some example projects. Uh, this is a PhD project from Dave Merrill at the MIT Media Lab. He now has a startup company called Siftio in San Francisco. And the idea is that we're really good at manipulating objects with our hands. Hand and brain co-evolved. So why don't we try to leverage the dexterity that our hands have better in our computer user interfaces? So instead of giving you one screen that's fixed, his interfaces are spread across many small screens that you can manipulate. So here's a demo video. So there's these games, for example, where you create the maze by moving computational tiles around, or you form words by moving these tiles around. And so each of these tiles is a small computer that has input, output, and that can detect which other computers are near it. Here's another example from another colleague of mine, Scott Saponis at Microsoft Research. Playing Guitar Hero with an air guitar. Well, how does that work? Well, he actually has a number of electrodes glued to his forearm that can sense muscle contractions. And then he uses signal processing algorithms to figure out what the configuration of his hand was given a set of sensor signals. The other really big area of research is to move all the way in the other direction, away from new hardware and sensors into everything that is happening online. So understanding, modeling social networks is a huge area of research in human-computer interaction. For example, the question, are you my friend, is actually quite complex. What does it mean? Well, it could mean <laughs> any of these things. Oh, no, there are more reasons. <laughs> Our social relationships are nuanced and complex. And by conflating all of them and reducing them to a one-bit friend yes or no rating, we run the danger of um, misrepresenting what our relationships are actually like. And so researchers in HCI both try to understand what happens when we have simplistic models and how to create better models and better algorithms for social networks online. The other part we're trying to understand is online peer production. Systems like Wikipedia, like large collaborative efforts um, that have really excelled at being now one of the best and most complete repositories of knowledge about our world. And we can ask the question, how does this social participation work in practice? What makes Wikipedia succeed and others fail? And are there any laws or patterns? Um, and it turns out, yes, there are laws and patterns that we can mathematically model and describe. For example, almost any site you look at online will have a so-called zip or power law distribution where the most active users are really, really active and then the next, the second most active user is half as active, third most active user, yet half, and you have this really long tail of millions of people who contribute very little. And so the question is, if this is the underlying reality, and it turns out to be the reality over and over again, how do we design systems that both leverage really active power users and keep the long tail of other users around because they still contribute very val valuable tidbits, just at a much smaller scale. All right, that is research in the large in HCI. And I thought 
Um, I'd also tell you about a couple of research projects that are happening here um, at Berkeley in human-computer interaction. So my own research group does work at the intersection of three different subfields. Um, crowdsourcing, so collective peer production online, and collective intelligence, design and development tools, that is, new tools and environments for designers and programmers, and work on new types of user interfaces, such as touch-based user interfaces and physical computing, which is a term we use to describe any interface that uses sensing and actuation. And we have a large number of um, projects across these different areas, too many to kind of survey um, in the remaining 10 to 15 minutes we have here. So I thought I'd just focus in on two of them. First, let's look at multi-touch applications and toolkits. So most of my projects begin by defining a target user group and a target task these users are trying to achieve, and then finding about what's currently hard, what is not supported, and how technology can help. Here in specific, uh, I looked at how to support co-located design. So if we want to support product designers, um, I did a bunch of obser observational studies, and one thing that really jumped out is today there's just this coexistence of physical and digital media in any type of meeting. So this is, um, in this photo, for example, there are printed out schedules, but then there's also probably a PDF pulled up on the laptop, and someone else will have the group calendar on a tablet. Um, but then things get scribbled down on napkins and into notebooks. And these two worlds live very uneasily next to each other. They basically know nothing about each other. So the research question we asked was, how might we help design team members manage that flow of information across the digital and physical boundaries? And uh, the particular system that we built was a large interactive tabletop display, which looked like this, that allowed you to both interact with digital information because it was projected, so we had multiple projectors showing information, but because it is very large, it's four by six feet, you can also put standard um, design notebooks, sketchbooks, other things on that table. So let me show you some of the interactions we then designed around this table. Here, for example, we have multiple people using multiple keyboards and mice simultaneously on the same display. And the users can go back and forth between using keyboard and mouse and touch-based interactions. But I also talked about, in the, what I told you a minute ago, about the motivation that we really wanted to bridge this digital and physical divide. This is all still digital. So let's look at some interactions um, to bridge that gap. Here you can take your uh, physical design sketchbook, just drop it onto the surface. We recognize where it is, and you just drag off a copy, and a couple seconds later, you have a high-resolution digital copy. You can also go the other way. Start with a digital image, just snap it to your sketchbook so you can trace it, and a minute later, you walk away um, with a high-quality sketch. So how did we do this? Well, there was a whole bunch of engineering. So we built this um, table platform by using multiple tile projectors, which project a single unified desktop from the ceiling onto this table. To make the table touch sensitive, we then put multiple cameras below the table. And these cameras had filters on them that only looked in the infrared spectrum. Then we had a bunch of infrared light sources that would flood the underside of the table with infrared light. And then when a finger would come in contact with the surface, the light would bounce off your finger back into the camera, and you can then apply standard computer vision techniques to find out where that finger is. And you can also find out when you place objects um, onto the table. right? You also get a reflection, but the reflection has a different shape. So we can now use... Um, shape analysis to distinguish between fingers and objects. And that, that then gives us high-level information, such as right now there's one finger down, there are three keyboards down, 
and three mice. And we can track both the position and orientation over time. Now, in addition to uh, creating this hardware, we also work on the software side. So here's a project that um, a student I co-advise, Kenra Kin, in the um, graphics and HCI group did um, as an intern at Pixar in Emeryville to support the work that uh, set dressers do at Pixar. So set dressers are uh, part of the animation pipeline. They create the environment that, animator, that animators later then drop the characters in. So we thought about if you have multi-touch input, how can you create the right interface for set dressers? And one key insight is when you have multi-touch, you can distribute tasks across multiple hands. So we came up with a gesture set for the specific domain of set dressing. And then we wrote an editor that runs on a multi-touch station that allows uh, set dressers to really rapidly mock up environments that can then be used um, in a later stage to position characters in, and uh, that then gets sent out to lighting and rendering, and at some later point, an animated movie uh, comes out. 